Okay, so if we go back over what we were doing today on acid-base equilibrium. This is about weak acids and bases because weak means less than 100%, quite a bit less. So weak means uh, very little. Acid like HF or NH3 is an example of a weak acid, weak base, ionized. So if it's a weak, it means that K is much less than one, which means it is reactant favored. And it means the concentration of your reactants are gonna be greater than the concentration of the products. That's what it means. So here we go. So we, we're not going to learn anything new about equilibrium. We, we've already learned everything about equilibrium. We just got a new system. So our system is going to be an acid-base reaction instead of a gas-base reaction. And so we take a weak acid like, uh, let's do acetic acid. That's a weak acid comes from the acetate polyatomic ion, so eight ions make ic acids, acetic acid. We already know this is weak, weak acid. And it uh, is in water. So if this is the acid that makes water act as a base. Water is gonna be the base. And this produces so how does Bronsted Lowry tell us that acids and base react? The acid donates the proton to the base. And so we end up with H3O, and we know that from our polyatomic list is the hydronium ion. Plus, what's left over after the acid donates the proton is the anion part of the acid which is your acetate ion, C2H3O2 minus. So that's it. <clears throat> now, that's our equilibrium, so I can't draw a single arrow. I need to draw the equilibrium arrow. So there we go. This is the acid equilibrium reaction for a weak acid. The weak acid plus water, let the acid donate the proton making hydronium plus the anion of the weak acid. Now, if I can ask you to write the K expression. So A is write the equilibrium constant expression. Can we all remember what that is? Don't shortcut yourself by saying you don't remember. Everybody knows if I give them an equilibrium, they know how to write the K expression. That's the equilibrium constant K expression. So here we go. So K, and because it's an acid, we give it not KC, but we're gonna give it a special designation KA. And that's gonna equal product concentrations, which is the hydronium ion, times the acetate ion and we're going to divide that by the reactant concentrations. Now remember this is aqueous so your weak acid is a reactant but water is a pure compound that's a liquid and what do we not include in our equilibrium constant expressions? Solids and liquids because their concentration doesn't change. Think of them as an activity of one. And so if I put in one, it's not gonna change anything. So aqueous, liquid, aqueous ions. 
There we go. All right. So that's the first part of what we learned today. Learn to write an equilibrium with weak acid. Write the equilibrium constant expression. The next thing we learned was, okay, now that I've got the equilibrium constant expression, I can go to, um, well, I thought it would let me change that. Okay. Uh, hang on. For some reason, it's not letting me go. Oh, well, add a new page. So here we go. So now that I have A, we're going to ask the question B, which is uh, determine the concentrations of all species in solution. equilibrium. Okay, there we go. So we already have our rice table, so we have our HC2H3O2, right? And this is a short cut way because we don't care about water. We can leave water out and then just split the acidic proton off as H+. So earlier in the year I said anytime you see H+, just know that that's really H3O plus, but I don't have to keep up with that. Okay. I don't have to keep up with that. I can just think H plus. Um, <clears throat> all right. Plus uh, the anions, acetate ion, H, C2, H3O2 minus. Remember, these are your aqueous ions. So our rice table is gonna be, there's our reaction. Initially, let's make up a number. Let's say we have 250 milliliters of 10th molar. So I'll say 10th molar. We don't have any of this initially. Once I put this in solution, uh, some of it will dissociate, not much, but some. And then for whatever amount dissociates, I get X and X of each ion because they're in a one to one to one mole ratio. And then at equilibrium, add your I and C row and you end up with 0 0.100 minus X. And I was telling them today, if this is your given value, don't truncate it as 0.1 minus X. Don't do that. Write down the number that's given. And that's X and that's X. Remember, that's just adding up those two rows. So now you're ready for me to give you Ka for that acid, and it's 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. You will be given those values. And that's gonna equal concentration of that ion times the concentration of that ion over 0 0.100 minus X. So we have a quadratic equation. But that's okay because we are going to make the assumption. What's our assumption? Uh, we're going to compare Ka. So when um, X is very small compared to the initial concentration of our acid, acid in this case, initial zero at the start, so 0.1. So we're gonna say whatever amount dissociates is very small compared to that, so that when I subtract it from point one, I essentially am still at point one. So that's how we do this approximation. This is valid if the uh, uh, Ka and initial concentration of your weak acid, this is just a generic way to write a weak acid, the initial concentration, are different, so they differ by four orders of magnitude. Four plus orders of magnitude, four or more orders of magnitude. That's just powers of 10. 
orders of magnitude or just powers of 10. So this is, if I wrote this in scientific notation, it'd be one times 10 to the minus one. So that's an order of 10 to the negative one. My Ka is 10 to the negative five. Well, they are different by four orders of magnitude. So I am okay to say that X is very small compared to the initial concentration. And so now I can simplify this to be, um, if I solve this, I get X squared equals essentially uh, Ka times the initial concentration of my acid, yes? So I'm showing you uh, kind of the generic form of it. And so X is going to equal, anytime you can make that assumption, and it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, it's going to equal Ka times the initial concentration of your weak acid. There you go. So now plugging in our numbers, so we'll add another page, plugging in my numbers, we are now going to get that um, Ka, remember Ka times the concentration of our acetic acid, HC2H3O2, initial equaled x squared for my rice table. And so x equals the square root, square root of both sides. So what's the square root of the Ka? But we have to multiply the Ka by the initial, which was uh, 0 0.100. Remember, all that's under the square root symbol, and that will give me x. If I go back to my rice table, then I see that x equaled the hydrogen ion concentration, which equaled the acetate concentration. So I've got two, once I solve for X in this example, I already have two of my equilibrium concentrations. And so that's gonna equal, and let me get a cal handy dandy calculator, which is somewhere. So I get the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0.1, close parentheses, and that gives me 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3. Now I have three sig figs here. That's a constant, so I go by my measurement, 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3, and because that's a concentration, my unit is molarity. All right, so there we go. I have found two of the concentrations, okay? Now, if I take 0.1, so the concentration of HC2H3O2, the acid, the weak acid at equilibrium, is going to be the 0 0.100 minus 0 0.00134. And when I do that subtraction, I'm going to go to thousands place. And you see that's not going to change it by much, but we will go ahead and subtract it. So 0.1 minus 0 0.00134, and that's 0 0.09866. That's too many sig figs. I can only go to the thousands place because that's my addition subtraction rule. It's about the place value of the decimal. And so my I have to round to this decimal, the six rounds that eight up. And so I get that the concentration of the acid at equilibrium is 0 0.099 molar. Okay. So this approximation saves me the quadratic equation. That's what it does for me. All right, so now I have the concentration of my ions in solution and the concentration of my weak acid and so the only thing else that we don't normally think about because in our beaker what do we have in our beaker well we have the ha and a lot of ha how come a lot of ha why do we have a lot of the undissociated acid because it is weak 
it is a weak acid. Not much dissociates, so most predominantly it's a molecule. It's going to stay as a molecule. But you'll have an anion. You'll have the ions dissociated, but very few of those, mainly the molecule. So that tells me it is reactant favored, which we said because K was much less than one. So now the only other thing that doesn't show up, I don't need water. Don't need water's concentration because it's a pure liquid. So it has an activity of one. We don't do any concentrations on solids or liquids, but there's something hiding in this water. So water auto ionizes. And so there is a very small concentration. So one of these will be the acid donates the proton and makes a hydronium ion. And then if this hydrogen donates one proton, it's left with an OH minus. That's the auto ionization of water. And so these are liquid. These are aqueous ions. And so what would your K for that be? Because it's water's ionization, they give it a special K called KW, W for water, equals concentration of products times the concentration of the other product divided by the concentration of reactants, but both your reactants are liquid, so we don't include them. So this is a very important formula for us moving forward into pH. So the KW for water, which is a constant, equals this times that. So if I know the KW, if I know the equilibrium constant for the auto ionization of water, and I do, okay, at 25 degrees Celsius, which is where you're gonna be most of the time, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time, and solution, and then that value is, one times 10 to the negative 14. One times 10 to the negative 14 is this constant. So if you know this, we just found the hydronium ion. Remember this is synonymous with that. So that you know. So if you know two of the variables in an equation, you can solve for the hydroxide. And so you would get that the hydroxide ion concentration then is uh, hydroxide ion concentration let me write in my purple, because this is one that we forget about because it's not in our equilibrium. Hydroxide was not in the equilibrium, but if we have an aqueous solution, there's always some little bit of hydroxide. It's gonna equal Kw, which is one times 10 to the negative 14, divided by the hydronium, which we found to be 1.34, times 10 to the minus three. And that will be the hydroxide. So let's do that division. One EE, -E, uh, negative four, 14 rather, negative 14, divided by 1.34 EE, -E, uh, negative three. So that gives me 7.46. Times 10 to the negative 12. <laughs> you see, that's a lot. Oh, well. Negative 12 molar. And so for my claim, then, let's see if we can remember these numbers 7.46, um, my claim then would be for the answer to that problem. Concentration of the hydronium ion is equal to the concentration of the acetate ion in solution, which is equal to, what was it, 1.34 times 10 to the minus three, something like that. Uh, and then the concentration of the weak acid, acetic acid in this case, was 0.99 molar and then um, the concentration of hydroxide then that's the other species in solution that isn't visible to us in the equilibrium 
And what was that? 7.46 times 10 to the minus 12 molar. And we see why it's not, I mean, it's, it's almost negligible compared to that and that. But if you're asked for all species, you should include it. But that will usually give you, uh, the wording will be such that you know to do that. And that's how we do it. And then the last part uh, that we did, um, so the extension to this problem is to go into pH. Extension, I don't even know if I'm spelling that right. Okay, so pH. This little p means negative log of something. So pH means the negative log H, the hydrogen ion concentration. You can either do H plus or H3O plus, same thing. That's what pH means. POH means what? Negative log of hydroxide. And because KW was equal to the product of those concentrations, we can do some math, some logarithmic simplification, and I can take the negative log of both sides. Negative log of KW equals negative log of the product, A times B, which would be negative log of A plus negative log of B. So negative log of that plus negative log of the hydroxide. Now we said negative log, we symbolize with P, so this can be the PKW, PKW equals PH plus POH. And that's where we get this formula that's very handy. The PH plus the POH equals 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. Because what is KW at 25? 10 to the negative 14. And what's the negative log of 10 to the negative 14 is negative of negative 14, which is a positive 14. So this side becomes 14 equals pH plus POH. So if you know pH, you can find POH. So if the pH, uh, so let's do that. So pH was equal to negative log of hydrogen ion concentration was 1.34 times 10 to the minus three. And so pH equals, and if I do that on my calculator, negative, don't do the minus sign. It has a change sign button on your calculator. Make sure you use the negative. So negative and then hit log. On my calculator, the log button is right here. So negative log, and you see how that looks. Negative log of the 1.34 EE, negative three. Okay, I get 2.87. I have three sig figs, so 2.873 in logs because they're a base 10. Digits to the left of the decimal don't count as significant. So we just get to include things to the right of the decimal. So if I need three sig figs, there they are, three decimal places. I'm done. Now POH, if I ask you for the POH, you're going to say that's 14.000, have as many decimals as you need for your sig figs, minus 2.873, and that's going to give me 11, so the POH is going to be 11.127. Now, does my answer make sense? I had an acid in solution. It's an aqueous solution of a weak acid. Yeah, pH is less than 7. So the pH less than 7, that tells me the solution is acidic. Okay, if the POH is great, you know, don't worry about that. Just figure it out always through the pH. pH less than seven, acidic, pH greater than seven, basic, and that gets it. So that's what we did today. 
I'll see if I can squeeze in one more video. We did a weak base just to show that it wasn't any different. I made them work this one on their own and then we worked it. So we had ammonia. With the bases, you have to add the water. You don't have the choice. Liquid, remember? If this is the base, what does that force water's role to be? Acid. That means water is gonna donate the proton. And when this picks up one hydrogen ion, you get NH4. And we know that if you gain an H plus, charge goes from zero neutral in the compound to a positive ion. And so that's the ammonium ion from your polyatomic table. And then what's left when it loses a hydrogen? OH, so hydroxide ion. The KW, your, I mean the KB, B for base, you're given. It's just coincidentally the same as that weak acid, but they don't always work that way. That's just an anomaly for ammonia and acetic acid. They have similar strength. So weak base constant is that. So KB then is going to equal, and if we do our rice table, let's say we have 0.50 molar. I'm shortening our sig figs down to two. Then at equilibrium, some is going to dissociate, make some, make some. So I'm just shortening that. We've done enough rice tables where if you just want to give me the E row, I'm okay with that. So then you get concentration of, we'll go ahead and do that for the greater, over ammonia. We don't include water, it's a pure substance, a liquid. Now, notice that the base equilibrium gives us hydroxide. So anytime hydroxide is in your solution, in your equilibrium, it is a basic solution. If hydronium ion is there, it's acidic. So here we go, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five equals X times X over, now in the substitution, don't make your assumption. You have to give it as it is in the E row. But now we come over here and tell the greater uh, X is much less than the 0.50 molar. We're gonna claim that we're going to say X is much smaller than the initial concentration of my base. Because, why? Well, what orders of magnitude is in our K? Ten, uh, five orders of magnitude. This is five times 10 to the minus one. So between one, 10 to the minus one, 10 to the minus five, that's four orders of magnitude. So we can make our assumption. And so we do. And so now I'm going to say X equals the square root of KA, KB rather, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five times the 0 0.50 initial concentration. And then that's gonna give me square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus five times 0.5 is 3.0 to two sig figs times 10 to the minus three molar. All right, uh, so what is X? X is this concentration and this concentration. So I already know that the concentration of the ammonium ion is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ion, which equals 3.0 times 10 to the minus three molar. Now, to get my concentration of my base at equilibrium, we still have to do the subtraction. We neglected it to save us the quadratic, but I have to include it here. 0 0.50 minus 3.0 times 10 to the minus three. And that's gonna to equal to two sig figs. You'll see it's not gonna change it. 0 0.497. But if I have to report that to two sig figs, I'm gonna call that 0 0.50. All right. But they'll generally give you three sig figs so that you do see a difference in the initial in that, but not a very big one. Um, so equals 0.50 molar 
to two sig figs. Okay, now, if I ask you for the pH, could you get it? Sure, but you can't get it from this number because that's hydroxide. So what you can get me is the pOH. So add another thing here and we can get, because we know the hydroxide ion concentration was 3.0 times 10 to the minus three molar, we can get the pOH, which the little p just means take the negative log of that number. And so the pOH is equal to um, negative log three times 10 to the negative three. And that gives me two point to two sig figs, 2.52. There's my sig figs, two sig figs. Okie doke. And then the pH then is equal to 14 minus 2.52. So the pH is equal to 16. <laughs> I added it. Uh, let's see. 11.48. Two sig figs. So that's how to get the pH. Just watch out for that. A lot of students make the mistake that they have X. They just go take the negative log and claim that is the pH. Well, no, that wasn't hydronium ion. That's hydroxide. So you have to get the pOH, subtract from 14 to get the pH. And that's what we did today in class.